Uh, well, welcome everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time today to, to join this, this presentation. And uh, my name is Chris Gale. I'm the director of tennis at River Oaks Country Club here in Houston. And uh, I feel, um, feel very fortunate that uh, I've had the opportunity to work in uh, indoor club settings and country clubs and, and um, uh, commercial clubs and, and public facilities as well. So I'm really looking forward to, to talking, talking about something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, so, so building junior programs and, and creating successful junior programs and growing them. So, um, one thing that we're going to see as we go along today is that uh, there's, there's a bottom line here that quality of product is, is what really does, is, is an incredible conduit for us to develop these junior programs. So, uh, it's going to be something that, we, that, that you'll continually hear and that we'll continually um, be, be, be talking about. Uh, I'd love to get through uh, everything today and then have uh, questions and answering session at the end. So um, bear with me with that. We have a lot to get through and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, first slide. So important that you establish your program. Uh, to me, this is arguably one of the most, most important aspects of every junior program. Um, you really need to hit your target audience, otherwise you're doomed before you begin. Uh, you know, establishing a junior program that fits the specific needs of your club and, the, and that club's membership and or clientele is paramount. Um, it's a little easier in the private club or the, the country club setting uh, as, as hopefully you've got a good gauge on your membership and, and what the needs and wants are there. Uh, for public and, and commercial facilities, having an accurate history of registrations is invaluable for this. Uh, so, so being able to see um, what, what has historically been the, the junior pathway and, and, and where it needs to go from there is, is, is really key. What are the needs of your facility and, and what are the demographics? It's, it's, so key to know where your strengths and weaknesses are, where uh, the bulk of your, 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 your program is located. Is it, is it Red Bull? Is it Orange Bowl? Is it uh, high performance? Is it, is it um, weaker in areas and stronger in areas? Establish that and, and, and it's, it's key to, to say to yourself, okay, what is the demographics of what I have here? Where do I need to be recruiting players? And, and where do we need to be really saying, hey, I want to make sure that, that we're, we're developing this program to the specific demographics that we have. Um, the, the ultimate goals of your program, the ultimate goals of, of your club and, and, and your, 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 um, the program that you're putting forward. Do you want to be high volume? Do you want to be more specialized to, to high performance? Or do you want to be more specialized to 10 and under programming? Um, do you want to be well-rounded in all areas? And, and again, this goes back to, to really hitting the, hitting the nail on the head with the, the clientele and the membership that you have. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a high, uh, high performance program and, and your highest level players are not competing at, a, at an extremely high level, then uh, you want to be accentuating where your program is at, ex, at its strongest. And, and that's where it's key to have a good, hard look at what your program truly is. Um, what are your program's specific strengths and weaknesses? I mentioned this before. Um, just like a tennis lesson, let's, let's work on the weaknesses. Let's, let's, let's make where we are underperforming or where our program is not uh, hitting, hitting the nail on the head. And let's, let's see if we can work on that. Let's see if we can establish that and, and, and make it stronger. And, how do we accentuate our strengths? You know, obviously there's something that we're, we're currently good at doing and, and something that we're, we're currently succeeding at. So how do we accentuate that and, and, and then create a well-rounded program? Um, so the initial keys is, is, is looking at your individual program. Analyze it, what do we need and how do we get there? creating a junior program, uh, a junior pathway, an appropriate junior pathway to, to what it is that you are looking to establish. This is, this is the foundation of your program. Uh, with a well-defined pathway, so many aspects of your programming 
uh, become easier and have more clarity. And, and that becomes integral with, with uh, parental education and promotion of your program, having that, that clear cut pathway and, and, and how you're going to develop your students and pathway they're gonna to go to to reach their final goals. Um, it's essential for clear, clear, clear um, establishing proper groupings, uh, long-term development, not only of your students, but in your, of your staff and your, your program in general. It really truly assists with the foresight um, as, as to where you are most populated and, and where you need to recruit to, to, to strengthen your, 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 uh, your junior program. So if you're, if you're lacking in a certain area, you, you, you know that that's where you need to be developing and promoting to, to, to bring children into that so that you can have that, that pathway, which is well, uh, not only well um, attended, but also well, uh, you can progress it very well from red, orange, green, uh, ball, and, and, and so on. Um, I think the toughest thing that we all fall into is, is sticking with the, the, the junior pathway, not necessarily moving uh, someone up into a, a different ball color um, simply because they're doing really well in, in one ball color. If, they, if they're doing well in orange ball and they're nine years old and they're physically uh, and cerebrally perfect for that and we move them up to green ball because they're not getting challenged in their orange ball class, then we're actually borderline doing more, more damage than good. Uh, the, whole, the whole premise of, of the 10 and under teaching is that we ensure that, that the, the children are in, in the right size court with the right size equipment for the right physical and cerebral development that they have. Um, I think that the tough challenge, uh, once, once that, that program is established and the pathway is established, is if someone is, is excelling at a certain uh, stage of your program, is finding the peers to, uh, to, to continually challenge that, that player in your program. Um, so I think that, that, that a lot of us fall into the trap of a student is doing really well and they're succeeding and the, the mindset is to move them up to the next ball color. Again, make sure that they're, they're physically and um, cerebrally at the stage to move into that, that, that next uh, progression of your pathway. So just a simple, simple example of, of, a, of a, a junior pathway, and this is the one that we have here at River Oaks Country Club. Um, you can see it that there's, uh, starts at three and four, Red Bull, and um, really Red Bull has three different levels in, in, in our program. It starts at three and four, 45 minute clinics, um, uh, associating a great time on a tennis court, uh, getting hand-eye coordination, things of that nature. Uh, progressing to Red Bull one, where we have five and six year olds on the court together. Uh, and also uh, our seven and eight-year-olds, our Red Bull Two class, uh, and at, at the definitely at the seven and eight-year-old level, there they're really starting to to develop not only just rallying skills, but point construction skills and and uh, and things of that nature. Um, from there, we, we we move to what I I consider a very integral part of our program here, and 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 in junior pathways in general, um, with at the orange ball. Uh, level, you can see that there's a split here in our, in our pathway. There's a uh, recreational and a competitive and, uh, pathway. So at this age, we're starting to, to be able to differentiate between the children that uh, are showing the desire uh, and the skill set and the motivation to move into a more performance program, which is we call the TTP program or the tournament training program here, uh, or to remain in a recreational program. And they both have their, their values as, as we all know that there's some children and that, that are really have a high desire to play high level tennis and that there's children that just enjoy coming and, and, and participating in tennis more on a recreational level. So that split at that orange ball level becomes very key for, for the ability to be able to cater to and offer um, a recreational pathway and a, and a more uh, performance pathway. Um, and obviously we go from that orange ball level to green uh, and, and, um, and from there to yellow ball. So we, uh, 
we, we took a lot of time with, with this pathway because we really feel it's something that we can um, use as, as, a, uh, as an important um, educational tool for parents, promotional tool, and it's very clear cut. It's very simple for, for, our, uh, for our, our membership to be able to, to see this, understand it, and for us to communicate it to them. Okay, staff development. Uh, it's, it's, I could spend a lot of time on this because we have a staff that, that, that is delivering our program. So no matter how good our programming is, our staff and the on-court performance is, is truly what it's measured by. Uh, so we, we really look to say to ourselves here, um, let's continue to educate. Let's, 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 let's really assist each other uh, in development and growth and continuing to put out a great product for our, our, um, our participants in our program. So creating a teaching template for junior groups is integral. Uh, it's, it's something that you want to establish where your whole staff are comfortable with it. Um, and it's simple to follow. So I have an example of a, a uh, 60 minute template that we use here. Um, and we use this for, for all of our lessons and, and we, we try and have it so that there's uniformity on, on each court of our, our junior program. So if someone was to come and look at our, our tennis program when it's in full flight with, with eight to, to 12 courts running at the same time, the, the, the progressions that are happening on the court are all happening at a similar time. So um, you can see here we have a, 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 for a 60 minute lesson, we have a simple five minute warm up with hand eye coordination skills um, in, involving balls, rackets, cones, uh, and, and interactive with each other to, to really get that, uh, that, that energy and that hand-eye coordination going. Um, moving from there, we, we go into our cooperative hitting uh, and really progressing to competitive cooperative hitting where we're having children try and attain certain numbers and rallying and, and working with each other uh, so that they, they're getting a consistent mindset and, and that there is the foundation of um, point construction and, and things of that nature. Um, going to a specific focus and, and for, for that day and for that group, it can be uh, different from the, the court that's next to it, depending on where their development is uh, during, you know, at, at that, that stage of the program. But uh, whether it's anything, contact point, like I said here, backhands, cross court hitting, et cetera, um, it should all be done as much with, with an interactive drill so that we keep, keep that hitting, hitting back and forth, uh, sending and receiving going. Um, really feel it's integral that, that every junior clinic uh, serves and, ser and returns of serves are addressed and taught and, and uh, are, are really um, something that are worked on in every time that the children come onto the court. Uh, if you can't serve, you can't play tennis. So, so having uh, the ability to start the point and, and have confidence in it is something that we really feel is important. So we work on that every uh, junior clinic that we have. Trying to implement with during point play what it was that was the focus of the, of the day. Um, really like to see point play being, being performed during our lessons uh, with a serve to start the point um, and, then, and then using the appropriate ball color, uh, the playing format. So um, with scoring, you can get very creative with that to keep interest of the children because sometimes, as, as we all know, point play can become uh, somewhat of a little bit of a slower rhythm. So it's up to us as a staff to, to create a dynamic, uh, high energy environment for these kids to, to really remain engaged. And I really feel it's important at the end of each, each class that there is a, a conclusion or, or a little wrap up where you speak to the children and, and you know, what did we learn today and what did we do well today? And uh, highlight that and discuss it with them and then uh, potentially say, okay, this is where we fell a little bit short today, but we're really gonna be looking forward to, the, to working on that next week, next week. So we're our next class so that we give them something to look forward to. Uh, the, uh, the uniformity of, of program implementation with a, with a universal language. Um, it's, it's really, really important that, uh, that we 
all all continue to uh, to use a, a language that is that is something that is consistent. So if another pro is working with a clinic um, and or there's your your club that rotates pros every every few weeks with uh, with their junior programming. Um, simple terminology of, uh, such as tapping, bumping, and hitting uh, with correlating zones. Um, you know, where are these zones, and what does that terminology mean? You know, tapping is our volleys where we're so where we're close to the net. Bumping is where we're hitting that that mid court shot, and hitting is where we're at the baseline. And and uh, and and ensuring that that same message is being sent to to the children. Uh, from from each pro, so there's no confusion, and and no matter who is teaching, the same language is being being used. And other simple things such as uh, after the children are hitting their shot, in are we all saying be ready or ready position, so that uh, they're, they're 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 hearing the same thing and getting a, a consistent feedback and consistent teaching. Uh, staffing the junior clinics with well qualified professionals who want to teach the junior program. I got to admit, I used to be stubborn against this one. Uh, my, my desire was to, to have all of the staff wanting to teach all aspects of the junior program. Uh, the, the, truth of the, the, the truth behind the matter is that if someone doesn't enjoy teaching, for example, a Red Bull class, and you're forcing them to teach it, they're not going to deliver the same quality of product that someone who, who truly enjoys teaching that age bracket is going to deliver. So I've, I've changed my thinking over the years where uh, it, for, for each aspect of the program, I want to staff it with, with my staff that are eager and hungry and have a, a pure joy and love of teaching that specific part of the program. Um, and what you're going to find is when that's the case, the best product is being put forward anyway. So, so, so to me, it's, it's really important that, that during your, your staff development and during your, your, um, your staff development sessions, that you, you really do get the opportunity to see who it is that, that excels in different areas of the program. And, and that's where you want to staff that, that, that person and where their strengths are. Um, with staff development sessions, the on-court sessions uh, here, uh, we want to be interactive and, and we want to have input from the staff that are participating in these development sessions. We try and do a, an on-court development session here at the club uh, once or twice a month. Uh, I think that it's, it's a great way for, for us as a staff to, to remain cohesive and have chemistry. Um, and it's just beyond important to continue that staff de development. Um, however, the important thing for me as director of tennis is that I'm not simply standing on a court with the staff saying, this is how we're going to teach this and, and be so verbose and, and just uh, isolate what it is that I want to see. I strongly encourage input. Uh, I ask a lot of open-ended questions to the staff and, and make it extremely interactive. Um, the staff enjoy it a lot more because they are, they are involved and, you see that they are getting, uh, you can see the minds turning and, and the, the thought process is going as, 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 as other staff members uh, give feedback or, or how they would run, how they would isolate something or how they would teach a certain aspect of things. And, and I think that it's, it's great to learn from each other. Uh, and once again, like I said, it creates really, really, really strong chemistry, but um, it's something that I feel very passionately about. And uh, I think that the, you can really see the, the, the clubs that have continuing education, continuing staff development from within uh, are usually really putting forward a great product for the, for the uh, clients or the membership. Okay, so we went over our, our teaching template here um, and we can, uh, we can definitely go back and talk about this if anyone has any questions on that. Parental education. Uh, our information should be really clear and really concise. Um, the more a parent knows about a program that's, that's coming forward or that they're potentially going to be signing their children up for, um, the more they know about it and they can actually understand 
the methodology and the pathway, which this is where our established pathway visually is, is a huge help and is great to use as a reference. Um, the more that a parent understands what, what it is that they're signing their child up for, the more comfortable they are having their child participate in that. Uh, I think that um, we take it for granted sometimes as, as tennis professionals that we know what we're delivering and we know uh, how we're going to go about it. And we also know what we're going to be doing, but it's, it's, it's not every tennis parent is a former tennis player or has a history of tennis. So being able to, to give clear, concise information to a parent where they can understand it, uh, they, can, they can absorb it and, and think about things for their children um, is really important. And I think that um, it, it, it moves to the next point here, which it needs to be easily accessible. Um, there's no point having great class descriptions and a great pathway if they're difficult to find. Um, ensure that all of your staff are able to communicate all aspects of your program really easily uh, and clearly and with a full knowledge of the program. Um, again, as, as, as tennis professionals, we are the ones delivering this program. Uh, on court and uh, what we do on court is very important. What we do off court in, in, in discussing how a child is doing or, or what it is that our program is to a parent is, is really key. Um, I've really enjoyed having parent meetings uh, for, for specific aspects of the program, whether it's Orange Bowl, Red Bowl, uh, the, the, the Red Bowl one, which is our three and four year olds or, or, or our tournament training uh, participants. But parent meetings are great as it gives the parents a chance to ask questions uh, and also gives them a chance in a group environment to hear other questions or concerns or thoughts that they might not have thought of. Um, it truly really shows that we care about their child's tennis and their development, especially if, if we have really good justified answers and, and we're able to answer once again, you know, with, with clarity and be concise with our, uh, with our answers. A parent child event or a parent child round robin or tournament or whatever you want to phrase it. I, I feel this event is, is something that has been so integral for, for programs that I have been involved with because there's, for some reason with, with the 10 and under teaching methodology, there's, there's a certain percentage of, of parents that are, they kind of doubt it, uh, you know, the thought process of, well, I didn't learn this way. Um, and I learned on a yellow ball on a full size court. I think that, that every parent child event that I've had has really opened the eyes up to every parent, whether they participate in it or whether they watch it, um, to the success of the, the red, orange and green ball uh, development. Um, the, the success rate, it was, as we all know, using the scaled down equipment, uh, it, really gets, it really gets hammered home with, with, with parents when they see uh, firsthand what the, the, the development of their child is and where they are and how well they're able to rally and construct points and, and play tennis um, with the appropriate ball. So I've always recommended doing it. I've always enjoyed doing it and seeing, seeing the results from it. All right, the behind the scenes work. What, what goes on before, during, and, and, and after all programming is, is, going, uh, is, is getting put forward is, is key. Um, all students should be grouped according to age and ability prior to the first clinic. And, and this, is, this is really, really important. Uh, we wanna make sure that none of our children are, are misplaced in a group um, and once again, if we're in a, in a country club or a private club environment, usually you have a pretty good knowledge of your student base. Uh, if you are having students coming in from, from outside the club and, and you haven't seen them participate on a tennis court before, um, a, a 15 minute free assessment is, is invaluable. Then you can see exactly where they need to slot into the program. Uh, therefore, we're not gonna have children feeling um, out of place, either overwhelmed or underwhelmed. Um, with all of this being said, a well-organized director of, of junior tennis 
isn't important. It's mandatory for your junior program success. Um, it's, it's the organization that goes on uh, to, to preparing for a junior program, I feel is, is, is beyond important. And, uh, and I think that that's where the, the true value of a well-organized director of junior tennis comes into place. Uh, prior to, to the junior clinic being physically performed, the, your staff needs to be aware uh, what court they are going to be on and what students they're going to be having on their court and who they're going to be working with prior to, to, the, to the lesson starting. Um, nothing looks less professional than pros not knowing who their students are and what court students should be going to. Uh, you, you, all your staff should be able to tell any student that's coming up uh, to the courts and to the program what court they are on, who's their teaching professional, um, and, and, uh, and, and what it is, what class they're in. Um, having this knowledge and having the whole staff being able to deliver this uh, makes the team in the program uh, run smoother and, and just appear so much more professional. Uh, also, pros can then start to prepare in their minds and have preparations to what they're going to do, given, to, given the group that they have uh, ahead of time. So, so a well-structured, organized lesson and implementation of that, uh, that lesson template can take place. Uh, continuing to have conversations with your staff. You know, are the groupings correct? Is, is any of the children overwhelmed or underwhelmed? Ensuring that, that groups are a good fit is, is, is key. Uh, nothing is better for a parent to, to have a, a, one of the tennis professionals or the director of junior tennis uh, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we, we've been moving along with this clinic and we feel like your child is, is, is going to be better challenged in another clinic or this, this clinic here is potentially something which is a little overwhelming and we wanna make sure that they're, they're in the correct group to, to, be, uh, to be developing in. When a child is comfortable in a, in a group uh, they, and, and they, they feel they're with their peers, you're going to see that they're going to enjoy it more and with enjoyment state is, is there's retention of, of students in your program. Um, it also shows that there's a, there's a genuine care for each and every student in the program and what is best for them and their tennis development. Uh, so that continued communication uh, amongst your staff about the groups, about the students, and then uh, with the parents is, is really key. Um, if you don't know where a, a student should go, if there's a doubt, always give the student uh, the, uh, the, the, the potential to move up in a group um, or that they're too strong for the group that they're in. So if you're not sure whether they should be um, in, in a certain, in a, in a group, whether it's a higher level group or a lower level group, one thing that I've always wanted to say to a child is that um, you're doing great. You're, 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 you're actually uh, too strong and too, your, your development is, is ahead of the group that you're currently in. I'd like you to move you up to, a, to another group that's gonna challenge you more rather than having to have the opposite conversation and saying, look, um, we, we need to bring you to a, to a group that's more suitable for where you currently are uh, because you're, you're a little over challenged where you, where you are in your group right now. I think that the positive move up is always gonna resonate so much better with that, that student than, than saying, you know, we, we need to move you back in the, in the program a little bit here. Um, when to release a student, if a student has outgrown the program, and, and this is a lot of, this is a really tough, tough thought process for a lot of us to, to, to get our mind wrapped around, but if, if a student has outgrown your program or our program and, and the best way for them to continue developing is to leave your program and, and potentially go to uh, a nearby trusted high performance academy. Um, if this is what's best for the student as they, as they don't have the, the peer base to challenge them in, in, the, in the program you have, uh, then, then it's the right thing to do. Um, with that being said, I always recommend that if a student has a really good rapport with, with your staff or one of, one of your staff members in particular, that you, you really strongly encourage them to continue their private lessons with, with your, your teaching professionals and, and your program. Um, but uh, I think that, that holding a student back uh, where they're not getting challenged and they're not getting the development that they, that they, they really truly need uh, to, is, is, is something that, that is, is, it's a difficult decision, but if it's the right thing for the student, then, then it's the right decision to make. Uh, 
All right. One of my favorite, favorite aspects of, of, of junior programming, do not underestimate the power of the mighty Red Bull. Uh, the Red Bull, Red Bull programs are so enjoyable when, when uh, you, you, you truly see these children break through and, and start to develop. But um, I always am constantly doing a demographical, demographical analysis of our junior program. Uh, it's so important for me to see where the bulk of our numbers are. Are we losing, are we losing players at a certain age? Uh, and if that is the case, why is that the case? You know, if, are we developing our students really well and having a great retention rate uh, from um, our red ball and our orange ball, but we're seeing a big, big drop out at green ball? And why is that the case? Or uh, is, is, are we top heavy? Do we have a lot of green and yellow ballers, but we don't have many of our, our three to eight year olds in, in our red ball program. And I think that that's something that's really an important aspect to, to do, do that demographic analysis of your program, uh, because then we can see where we, we potentially need to, to be, uh, recruiting players. Um, and then, and then with those classes where we're having numbers dropping off, you can also, or where we have a, a, a void in numbers, um, do we need to maybe include some more dynamic programming or classes or something of that nature where we're, we're able to build those numbers up? Is what we're currently doing, is, is that not hitting the target? And, and what do we need to do to, to, to create that, uh, that, that buzz and that registration process and, and, and have more students join those, um, those aspects of the program that aren't quite as well populated. You, you, utilizing strong instructors that are good with small children, little children. I mean, these, these three to eight year olds that come out to, to our Red Bull classes, they are uh, full of energy. They're learning the game, enjoying the time out on the court is, is, is what is so important. And I think that, uh, I think that we need to utilize instructors that know how to teach proper Red Bull classes. Uh, and enjoy teaching the Red Bull classes and are good with children at that age. Um, if you really break it down, there are, there are three stages, as I mentioned before, of, of Red Bull development. Uh, ages three and four, ages five and six, and ages seven and eight. And, and those classes are structured differently and uh, they, they have different physical and cerebral capabilities in each of those, those different uh, three Red Bull classes. Um, and, and I think that it's, it's so key that, that all of those classes are taught correctly and properly with the correct uh, Red Bull uh, teaching, teaching um, format. Um, and the reason I talk so much about Red Bulls and, 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 and the importance of, of a Red Bull program is that if you really look at it, if you create a positive environment where these children associate learning tennis with fun, and a good time, if the tennis bug is created at this age, that age bracket is, is literally the next 10 to 15 years of your junior program. And, and with that being said, if that age group and that, that, that group are having a great time, parents talk with each other, parents communicate, and it's, it's, it, and it's, a, it's something where a, a great activity that children are enjoying is something that all parents crave. And, if you're creating that at a young age, uh, that, that security and that ability to, to have a strong junior program for, for the long duration has now been set. And uh, I think that that's the opportunity that we, we really need to look at uh, is, is that the Red Bull is the foundation of our program and it's the, the, the longevity of our program as well. So with that, uh, I wanted to, to open up some any answer, uh, questions and, and answer any questions that, that I can from you. Uh, so if you've had any questions as, as this um, has been going along here, I'd love to address them and uh, be able to, to, to assist you guys. Okay, we had one question. Um, if a student went to the recreational pathway to green one and decided they wanted to go through to TTP, would they jump right in with the TTP green? 
That's a great question. That's a great question. And uh, this is this. The answer to that is yes. And and especially if that they're, they're at that green green dot level and that green dot uh, at stage of your programming, um, I think that the uh, we see it a lot actually, where where a child. Uh, really gets into their their tennis and let's say they're in that recreational green ball program and not only are they doing this uh, the clinic every week but then they step up and they say okay I'm also going to do a private lesson because I'm really loving my tennis and they they incorporate a, a practice and play mentality where they're they're coming to clinic they're doing a uh, a private lesson for the, their biomechanical development and then they're, they're, they're playing, they're playing tournaments, they're doing match play through the club or they're doing individual match play with their peers. Um, that recreational player can make a jump in ability level and, and success and development level very quickly. So uh, absolutely, we would see that recreational player uh, jump from that, that, that aspect of the program to the, um, the high performance or the TTP part of the program. Great question. I, Chris, I, I have a question. Uh, I was just uh, curious going through the pathway thing. Um, when you when it comes to that crossroads of somebody going to be a recreational player or a TTT, TTP player, um, how it, or when do you determine um, whether a child should be on the recreational path or the, the high performance path? Is, is that a conversation that happens with the child and the parent at a certain age? Um, is it... Um, how, how does that does that just happen organically by offering different ones and the kids just choose? Is there, is there a certain way you guys go about that when uh, when determining a kid wants to be a recreational or, or more competitive player? Yeah, and and an, another great question. It's it's something that um, yeah, and you you use the terminology. Is it something that happens organically, and um, or is it a conversation that you have? And 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 to answer the question um, very candidly, is it's 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 it really depends on the individual. Uh, sometimes it does just happen organically where uh, the child's development happens and, and continues to, to exceed their expectations and, and they, they develop, they're developing really soundly. And um, it's, it's something where they naturally have that competitive spirit and that motivation and desire to, to be in a more competitive program. So that's where they get funneled into. Um, there's other children that just have an, an incredible skill set and a natural coordination for tennis. And it might not have been at the forefront of their mind. So uh, communicating, the, the, the way that I have always done it is I, I reach out to the parents and communicate to them and say that their child is, is really performing well and, and really uh, developing very well. And, and to continue the development, um, to, to, to maximize it for them, um, they should potentially join our TTP program. And, and, and the, the first question is, well, what is that program? And uh, for us, it's a, it's a two day a week program. And we're, we're a little bit more, uh, we run it more like a college practice than we do uh, our recreational program where uh, there's a little more competitive spirit within it. And um, so, so the communication and the discussion with the parent is there. And uh, if the parent is on board, then um, it's, it's so important that you talk to the child because the child's going to want to do it as well. Uh, if, if, if the child is, is loving the recreational program and they don't want to do the, the, the more competitive TTP program, then you know, what's our bottom line? Our bottom line is that we want to maintain this children's interest in tennis and, and wanting to continue to play tennis. And so that's where it, that, that's where it becomes extremely important to, to also involve the child in the communication with it. Awesome. Thanks. I think we've got a couple more questions. So Amy, Amy, take it away. Sure. We have a question. Is there a quantitative assessment tool that you use to take the fuzziness out of when kids should move to another group? Uh, is there a, can you repeat that question for me? Please? Yeah. Is, there, is there a quantitative assessment tool that you would use to take the fuzziness out of when kids should move to another group? Uh, without a doubt there, I mean, it, 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 if there's defined, uh, clear and concise, uh, programming, um, descriptions as to what it is that is being done, uh, during a, 
Orange Bowl one class and what it is that you want to be achieving during that Orange Bowl one class to move to Orange Bowl two, or it, whether or not uh, we want to make sure that we have um, uh, a child move into the competitive or the TTP range. Now, with moving from an, uh, one ball collar to the next, um, there's there can quite often be a little bit of uh, gray area or, or, or cloudy area there in regards to the clarity of it because some uh, 10 year olds physically develop faster than other 10 year olds. And, and if they have the, the physical uh, capabilities and the, and, uh, of, of handling now going from a 60 to a 78 foot court um, and is gonna benefit their development, I think that that's where uh, the professional that's involved with that student needs to be able to make that assessment and communicate that to the director of junior tennis and say, I think that this person is ready to move up. Here's why they have the physical and cerebral capabilities of, of going from an orange ball class to a green ball class um, and, and being able to, uh, to, to, to handle the, the, the transition. Um, so I think that each and every student is, is something that needs to be looked at individually, which is why personally I feel uh, that, that continued conversations throughout a session of a junior program is, is so important because uh, a, a child might, might have that ability to, to move up within the first four weeks because they, they have developed uh, the game that, that way. Um, the other thing for me is that, that and I, I was remiss for not mentioning this during the presentation, was it's very important on the organizational side of things to have exact birthdays and birth dates of your students. Uh, because going into the fall, a student might be 10 years old and 10 months old. And, and so in two months, they're turning 11 and they're gonna have to go into your green ball program as it is anyway. Um, so then you can start to initiate uh, blended clinics where you're, you're working with orange and green balls and blending those clinics so that uh, the, the student is able to get a feel of, of both the, the orange ball and the green ball and what it is they're, gonna, they're going to be moving into. So it's not just a, a, a very a, an elevated jump from one to the other. Um, I mean, there's, there's other proficiencies that you can have where students have to be able to um, uh, achieve certain aspects and, and certain goals and certain uh, expectations to be able to move into to the next program and um, and each and every club you know can can have their own individualized uh, proficiencies that these children have to have before they move into the next uh, stage of, of the program so I know that's probably not the, the 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 most direct answer but but I've covered a lot there and and with the with the the intention of saying that every club is different with how, when, and where a, a child should move to the next stage. And, um, and that's something that, that a great line of communication um, and, and a continued finger on the pulse from the director of junior tennis is key. Okay, we have another question. Um, how much from green ball to yellow ball do you have your players competing against one another? Oh, it's a, such a great question, and and it's a it's a it's a tough one for me. I think that I I want to assess and look and see if a green dot tennis player is interacting with the yellow ball player. Uh, are they going to be overwhelmed? Um, is the yellow ball going to bounce too high for them? And and are they not physically developed yet to be able to handle that? And if they don't have that physical capability to hit with a a yellow baller, then I think that it's it's detrimental not only to their game but also to their their spirit and 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 their confidence. And and the last thing we want to do is is bring someone's confidence level down and 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 have them have a a, a negative experience and potentially have them feel that they don't want to move to the yellow ball because of that experience. Now, on the flip side of what I just said there, uh, if you have entry level yellow ball players that have just graduated from green to yellow and you have green dot players that are on the cusp of, of graduating to yellow ball, then interaction is healthy, uh, especially if that green dot baller can, can handle the yellow ball. It's, it's kind of what I was discussing before with the last answer with, you know, at some point you want to be blending ball colors so that when a child is going to go from one ball color to the next, they've already got a little bit of familiarity and comfort, comfort with that next ball, ball color. OK, 
Okay, and how often during a clinic session do you offer parent meetings? Uh, usually at the start um, of a clinic, uh, if and and it's an open invitation uh, as as or as that 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 session is about to begin. Um, one thing that I've also found extremely invaluable is during the session, uh, if it's an eight week session, for example, uh, potentially like week number six, um, having a parent week and allowing the parents to come onto the court uh, while their, their child is, is participating in the clinic. And you can run that, those parent weeks one of two ways where the parent is, is on court uh, listening and hearing and observing from close jurisdiction to the court as to what is going on. And while they're there, you can answer any questions that they have. Uh, you can explain where the students are at in their current progress, uh, why it is that we're doing what it is that we're doing, um, what is going to be happening next, how it works with the pathway, not only for their, their, their developmental pathway, red, orange, green, yellow, but also with their game. Um, or you can have it where the parents at Parent Week interact with the clinic and, and quite often that's a big, um, the, the kids love it and, all, and, and also the parents then firsthand get a feel of, of A, how the balls feel uh, if they're not yellow balls and also um, what it is that you're doing and, and, and the teaching methodology behind it. I think that's it for the questions. Okay. Wait, oh, like wait, no, 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 we no, got, no. We got a couple more, Amy. Sorry, I got to scroll down. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these think... keep coming, Chris. This is great. We got about 10 minutes left, <laughs> we so we'll, we'll keep, uh, we can keep doing questions for the, for the final few minutes here. Absolutely. I think it's important to understand the repercussions of moving kids up. Quite often, if you move one up, you will have a mutiny on your hands if others don't move up at the same time. How do you handle that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very common situation, and and where um, a lot of, you know, there's quite often, especially during your recreational programs, where a lot of participants are only participating because their friends are there. They do love tennis and they enjoy it, but uh, if the if if that friend base is split apart, um, quite often uh, you can see um, fall off or, or drop out from from a student. So um, I think that. Uh, there's there, there needs to be a good hard look at whether or not um, you're you're holding back someone too much by not by not having them move to the next level um, and and if if there is a, a core group of, of children who enjoy being together and it's time for fifty percent of them to move to the next clinic ability wise uh, that's also a great opportunity to reach out to the parents and say, look, the children are about to move into the next level. We just have a couple of things that we really need to, to have your child uh, develop just a little stronger. Um, how about we, we get out and do some private lessons just to get them up to speed so that they're ready to move to that next level. I mean, the bottom line is, is tennis is a, is, is a recreational sport for a lifetime. We, we want these children to, to stay in the programming and in tennis. And um, if that means that, that we need to individually develop some children in one-on-one -on -one sessions to to allow them to have the to, to to move into the next program with their peers and their friends. Um, let's avoid that mutiny. That's a that's key. Okay. Next question: Do you have older beginner kids start in orange ball or red ball? Uh, depending on their age, and and I love this. I I, I think that this is such such lateral thinking that. Uh, if you get a 13 year old who's never played before or is, 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 is extremely remedial, trying to force them to do a yellow ball to start with is, is difficult. So at that age bracket, I would usually, my, I guess my rule of thumb is to drop one ball color below. So for a teenager, I would go to a green dot ball. And, uh, and, and, and once again, the challenge for, for me and for our program is that that teenager has other teenage peers that they're going to develop with so that uh, there's instead of just being a 13 year old and three 11 year olds on a green dot ball you have four 13 year olds that are all of a similar ability level um, 
and they, they get their confidence and they get their development going on the ball that they're going to succeed with because with success breeds enjoyment and with enjoyment breeds retention in, in, in our industry and, and playing tennis. Um, so my rule of thumb would be like one ball back and, 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 and utilizing that to establish confidence, enjoyment, success, uh, which are, which are three key components. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that it's not always convenient that uh, I'll keep using the 13 year old, for example, that you have other remedial 13 year olds. So one thing I usually talk to parents about when they, when, when they're, they're open, openly say, Hey, my child is a beginner. They're 13. Um, I usually ask them, do they have any friends that they want to do this with? Because quite often there'll be a friend that is of a similar ability level. So then the, the comfort level in the program and the comfort level on the court, seeing a friend, seeing a familiar face and having someone that they know is similar ability, uh, it just automatically relaxes that, that, that group and, and uh, any nervousness or, or um, intimidation to come into the program. Okay. Do you ever assign one of your more experienced coaches on staff to roam between courts for any red, orange, or green ball clinics? Absolutely fantastic, astute point. And, and the answer to that is as often as I can. Uh, the, our director of junior tennis here uh, is strongly encouraged to staff the clinics uh, with the ability for, for him to be able to roam. And, and uh, with, that being, with that being done and with that being achieved, he's literally um, able to get a great visual on every class. He's got able to get a great visual on where every class is developmental wise. Uh, it gives him an opportunity to, to be able to have some preemptive thoughts as to where certain children should go, be able to maybe even um, communicate with the pro to keep an eye on a certain group and say, is it balanced? Is there, is the, uh, is the ability, is there any ability discrepancies? You know, I, I might've seen something there, but I want you to continue to try and develop this child or work the clinic to this child a little bit more so that they, that, that everyone's getting to the same level. But, um, I see I, the value of a pro roaming and, and as director of tennis, I love getting out during junior clinics and, and roaming the courts as well. It's a great way for myself and our director of junior tennis, to be able to get a touch uh, on every student uh, and, and get familiarity with every student in our program. How do you handle a player that is ready to move up, but the parent doesn't think their kid is ready? Uh, wow, that's a unique scenario. Majority of the time it's the opposite of that, where, where uh, a child, um, a child, uh, or a parent is really driving for their child to, to move up. I mean, it's, I think that, that you have to have confidence in, in the program that you have. And, and again, referring back to the pathway and, um, and has, has that child hit the proficiencies that you want them to be at in, with their, with their development. And um, again, parental education is key. And, and I'm not one to tell a parent what their child should do, but, if you, if you genuinely have that child's best interest at heart and their tennis best, their, the, the, what is best for their tennis development at heart, um, I, I don't think a parent would, would really argue with that. But um, in the case that they do, there's, there's other aspects. If they're aging out of a certain age bracket, then it, it's a simple discussion that you know, they are not able to play any USTA sanctioned events in orange ball as an 11 year old. So they need to be moving to that green dot ball. I mean, if we have justification behind our process um, and, and we can, we can uh, communicate that clearly, then uh, usually a parent is, is, is more than willing to put their trust in the hands of the professional. Okay. And how much in your yellow ball level programs, specifically advanced players, do you have them playing tournaments and coaching them at tournaments? Uh, I mean, the, the, the practice and play mentality is so important. And so, so if they're comfortable and confident enough to go and play tournaments, I strongly encourage it. Uh, if we are able to have um, eyes on them and as, at, at the tournament, even better, uh, which is why I think it's key that if you have Let's take, for example, you have a, a, a group of 12 children that are involved in your yellow ball program that are all have the ability level to play tournaments. If you can get 
a certain percentage of them to play the same tournament. You know, if we get four of them playing the same tournament, they're having the, the ability to have a staff member there uh, to, to see all of them um, is, is invaluable. And, and then what that also does is it brings what happened at the tournament back to your program and you're able to then work on that in your program, but also by, by saying, hey, I was at this tournament, uh, we had these participants, this was done great. They, they did a fantastic job of this. Uh, this was clearly an aspect that we need to work on. So as a group, we're gonna work on this. The, the back end of that is hopefully you, you encourage your other participants in the program to wanna to play tournaments as well. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Um, I think that just about wraps up the questions and we are almost at 2 p.m. So we will adjourn. But I uh, just wanted to say, Chris, thank you so much. I, I think the, the Q&A chat speaks for itself and that uh, you had a bunch of, of, of really good insight. And I think a lot of people really, really got some good stuff out of it. So we really appreciate uh, you taking the time and uh, sitting down with us. Um, you know, for, for everybody that's on the call, we, uh, we will be having uh, sessions continue uh, again next week with uh, USPTA and PTR State of the Union addresses. Um, so uh, feel free to, uh, to register and, and hop on for those calls. But uh, Chris, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, and we, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us about, uh, about your programs over at River Oaks. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you, everybody.